G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. System setup and product review for this one. And we're gonna take a look at a Linux distribution I've been trying to get to now for, I don't know, four or five weeks now. Sparky Linux. Now, during last night's live stream conversations here at Backout IT, a viewer asked if I was going to have a look at it. Now, I cannot for the life of me remember the viewer's name. I do apologise. They uh, they asked if I was going to have a look at Sparky Linux, and I said to them, look, I've been trying to get to it for some time, but with everything else I've been doing here on the channel, I hadn't got to it yet. Sparky Linux is a Debian-based Linux distribution. I have got the uh, um, XFCE stable version, so I didn't get the rolling version version or the testing version, I got the stable version, and uh, like I said, I've been trying to get to it for four or five odd weeks now, and I just, I just haven't had a chance. So, as always, let's give Sparky Linux the backyard IT treatment, gonna have a sticky peek at it. Let's get into it. Alrighty, well, here is our Sparky Linux. Now, I have actually done a review of this, but... I'm going to do another one. Um, I believe there's been an update to it, so we'll uh, we'll we'll have a look. Um, standard test bench scenario as always, and there's our remote Sparky Linux 4.7 XFCE. So we'll have a look. This is a Debian-based Linux distro. I think the last time I reviewed this, it wasn't, it was alright, it wasn't great, but I'm not sure whether there's been an update to it since I last looked at it. I think I last looked at this two or three months ago. I think. <laughs> it's dangerous when I start thinking, isn't it? See what this does. Okay. Uh, Sparky installer. There it is there. Ah. That's right. Settings. Display. Back to full screen. We'll just do a simple Sparky install. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yep. Erase the whole disk. I think there's been an update to this. I'm not. I'm not overly sure. I vaguely remember having a look at it a couple of months ago, but I can't remember. I have to go back through and have a sticky beak. If I have, I apologise for making the same video twice. But I've got. I downloaded the uh, the ISO this morning. I know I said I've been trying to get it for four or five weeks now, but in actual fact, I didn't even have the ISO. So I downloaded the ISO um, this morning. I thought, well, we'll have another look at it and uh, see what it's all about. It is sitting, I believe, on Debian 8. I don't think this one's on Debian 9. 
but I chose the XFCE because I, I have to say I don't mind XFCE desktops. They're, they're not they're not all bad. Busy day on the channel though. Fair bit of content to come out today. Don't forget, we've also got the, um, well, it's sort of a profile video, but it's more an AV-based one, audio-video-based one, and we're going to take a look at that wall-mountable hi-fi that the other half, well, she gladly bought it for me. Don't forget, coming up, tonight as well, 7pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time, we'll have the Backyard IT live stream conversations GMT UTC plus 11 I think I remember what the problem with Sparky was I thought, I thought it was alright but I didn't, I didn't rave on about it like I said, this is probably a newer version than the one I looked at a couple of months ago, two or three months ago, so. Fast and responsive, desktop, secure and lightweight. Just while this is installing, I'll go through the um, change of plan for the uh, for my virtualization system here, uh, pertaining to, obviously, ESXi. The current server I've got is starting to fail. Um, I'm on it now and I'm managing to get system set up and product reviews done on it, but as soon as I try and make it work <coughs> and you know, work very hard, it starts to you know, have a bit of a tanty and uh, tends to crack it a bit, so I know she's on the way out. So the the big Acer server is going to replace it. Now, I know it's a little bit slower, but maybe if I can get enough money together, um, being socket 1366, I may end up seeing if I can get a couple of cheap um, 3.2 gig quad-core Xeons for socket 1366 and run two, you know, two quad-core 3.2, 3.3 3 gig Xeon CPUs and, and somewhere in the vicinity of 40 gig of RAM. One of the more slower Linuxes I've had to install. Now what I will do with the Asus server actually is transport all my daily <coughs> Unix and Linux systems I use, so GhostBSD, Ferran, OpenMAN Driver, Hybrid XFDE, LX Legacy 2, LXD Win, um, will get transported over to the new plat to the new server. Um, I'm going to continue using this one until it completely falls over. Now I do have all my ISOs for my daily alternative OS systems. So I'll be doing a massive cleanup. Also with the Acer, I will replace the drives that are in it with the bigger ones that I've got in this one. Actually, I may not because that's got three terabytes on it, doesn't it? That's got three terabyte, three one terabyte drives. So that's actually got more space on it than this one's got. No, I may end up just using the drives that are in it. I think we might just do that. Two and a half terabytes for OSs and 500 gig for ISOs. The good thing is, is that it's got full virtualization, so that's pretty much what I want. Okay, well, we're all done. Let's uh, let's restart this and have a look. Oh, it's done it again. This is what's annoying me. This is why I know the systems failing badly really badly
not at the moment. We'll just do a core setup. Um, first thing we've got to do is get that display right. Again, I've got to do this. Now we can go back to full screen. We'll close this. All right, so let's have a little bit of a hunt around in here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go into the terminal immediately. Ah. Okay, so let's, let's go have a look at what we're on here. So we're on Debian 4951-1. Okay, so it is definitely Debian 8. Ah. Get out of that for a minute. All right. So let's just have a bit of a uh, sticky beak. So we've got a web browser. We've got Thunderbird. VLCs in there, so we've got Synaptic Package Manager, Terminal Emulator. Let's have a look at HTOP just quickly. Oh, HTOP's not there. Let's just have a quick sticky peek at this. That's interesting. HTOP's not in there. All right, let's have another look. All right, so we're about 370 meg out of 4 gig, so it is light. It's not too bad. All right, let's have a look at some of the accessories we get. Oh, this is why I didn't like it, because it's all back to front here. Okay, so we've got a bulk rename. We've got Florence Virtual Keyboard. We've got the... Gal calculator or calculator, I should say. We've got an image viewer. We've got light desktop management, GTK plus greeter. We've got the menu editor. We've got notes. We've got a mouse. We've got a simple text editor from Mousepad. We've got a Raj global time. We've got the UX term and task manager. Under internet, we've got Firefox ESR in this one, as well as Thunderbird Pigeon, Hexchat. You get and a web browser installer to add your favorite browsers to the system. Multimedia, we get VLC with it. Now I better just have a, I'm gonna have a look at Firefox as well. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, what do we get? We get 2.226 umbrella with, with uh, VLC. Geez, this is fairly responsive actually. All right, let's have a look at uh, what we get here. So it's ESR5250. I'd say there'll be updates for that. Or you can probably add um, 57 if you need it. So there's the internet. Multimedia, as you can see there, we've also got uh, Camerama. We've got Full Pulse Audio. We've got Radio Tray. Record My Desktop, which is similar to SSR, VLC, and obviously XF Burn, which is pretty much standard with most of the XFCE stuff. Office, it's a complete library Office 5 pack. Settings. We've got the uh, Ice-T Web. Menu Editor, Mime. Panel Preferred Apps. Removal, Sessions and Startup. Settings Editor, Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, system D units, so we've got a system ADM or system administrative uh, fine tune windows behaviors, workspaces under system we're going to have a look at about Sparky so there it is there, it's Sparky 4 sitting on 49044 64 kernel not too bad there 
Oh, oh no, that's why I've installed Hayes. We've got three terminals. You've got UX term, XFCE term, and uh, X term as well. Full USB. Time and date is just about right. Oh no, that is right. Yeah, it's 20 to 12. System upgrade tool. Go have a look at that just quickly. Yeah, I think this is slightly newer than mine. Oops. No, we don't want to go through that. We can leave that alone. Okay. Uh, no. Don't want to do that at the moment. We go and have a look at uh, some of our settings. There's our settings manager. Firewall. Standard Linux, Debian, Firewall. Pretty much the same across Ubuntu and Debian to an extent anyway. Device Driver Manager. Yeah, alright. Ooh. Oh no, that'd be right because it's on ESXi, isn't it? So it's not going to know. Not too bad, actually. It's light. I'll give it that, but... Um, Desktop properties, desktop settings. Go and see if we can find. Oh. Well, there are all our desktop backgrounds at the moment. I'll have to get some more of those at a later date if I decide to use Sparky as one of my Linuxes when all the other ones are giving me grief. Look, it's not bad. Um, I'll give it credit, it is lightweight. A bit in the ETC folder. A lot in the ETC folder, actually. Holy dooly. Wow. A fair bit in there. A lot in the ETC folder. Like I said, it's not bad. Um, it, it is fairly lightweight. It's a pretty responsive Debian distribution. Uh, we get two workspaces there. A 129 out of OpenBSD, so not too bad. Look, it's all right. Um, I'm not... I think I said this when I originally looked at it. I'm not wrapped in it. I, it's, it's not something that, you know... I, it's light, it's clean, it's neat... Um, full synaptic package there from the Debian repositories as you can see we'll see if OBS is actually in there sure that it is oh yep there it is past it. So OBS is there and it is 1902 so you'd have to update that with all the OBS utilities. I assume FFmpeg is um, here somewhere. I've gone past it. Oop. Uh, we'd have to install FFmpeg. So if you were running an NVIDIA card, you'd uh, probably do the NVENC system anyway. Look, it's not bad. Um, I think I said when I originally looked at it that uh, it wasn't too bad. I don't think I will use it personally. Now, don't rip my head off just because I don't like it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving out an honest opinion. It's a neat and clean... Debian distribution base but personally I still think I'll stick with my existing ones um, there have been other reviews of Sparky Linux around YouTube that have been head over heels for them reckon it's the best eh, look I'll be honest I don't think I'm going to be using it as one of my permanent Linux uh, OS's or alternative uh, OS's uh, as a daily operation system 
but that's just my personal opinion. But there we are, Sparky Linux. Not too bad, but I don't think it's one that I will use personally. Stick around, plenty more coming up today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.